In this video we're going to look at setting our guitar up with strings. You'll notice in the uh, kit there's two sets of strings. There's a roll of strings which come from the factory. And they're actually pretty good. I've used those on some of the guitars and uh, for the price of the kit it's just amazing how good the quality of that stuff is. And those strings are fine. Uh, but look, no one makes better strings than the Americans so we've got our own brand. These Pitbull guitar strings are made in the USA and I've selected a 9 to 42 super light gauge which is just what I happen to use. So um, that's a, a pretty a general um, gauge good for most styles of music. If you want something a bit heavier you can um, go and buy a set of Giordario or uh, Ernie Balls or whatever string you like. But uh, these are very good quality and they should do for um, most purposes. So we'll come in and we'll have a look at this ST1 which I've got here and we'll see how we um, string it up. Okay, so what you're going to need, you're going to need your guitar, obviously, your strings, and a pair of pliers. And I've got here just a pair of um, s snipping wires, so we can cut off the ends of the strings. And that's about it. Okay, although we're using an ST1 here, this string stringing method applies to all our guitars. It just The only thing that differs is where the guitar strings mount through. On this one, they actually mount through the back, through these six holes here. And they come up through the saddles at the top, then up to the nut. On our uh, LP1, SG1, MB1 and EX1 they mount through a bridge uh, string holder at the back here. And on the TL1, the same sort of deal, the uh, TL1 bridge has some six holes at the back of the bridge. And it's only the SV1 that is a special case and I've got a video on that because it uses a Floyd Rose style bridge where you have to actually cut the strings and then screw them into holders. So we'll go ahead with this ST1 and I'll show you my uh, technique. First things first, let's get these strings out of the pack and into the guitar. So we'll do that one by one. We'll take them out of the pack and careful to keep these in order. And you see on the front they're labelled. So that's 009. That's the top E string. So that's the very lightest string. So let's put them down there and we know what order we're working through. So the 009, we'll take that out, we'll turn our ST1 over, so I'm going to thread that string through there, hole. and when you're looking into that hole you'll see the um, metal bridge there with the corresponding hole underneath, and you just got to feel your way through, and there it goes in, and you can pull it out from the other side. Alright, I'll just do that with the um, five remaining strings and we'll show you the top. So what I want to do is I want to feed the string from underneath here, up through the spindle. So when we tune it up, it's tuning up from underneath. So I'll find the hole there in the spindle. There, oh. there it goes. So it's through the spindle. And I pull it through. And I want to leave a little bit of slack in the string. I'll just pan out just so I can show you how much slack we've got. See? You see here, there's actually quite a bit of slack. Because what I want to do, and I'll, I'll bring the camera in again, we're going to um, spin this string, this end here, which is connected to the saddle, we want to spin that around from underneath, around the spindle at least once. And that'll help us when we um, start tightening it up. So I'll zoom in again and you'll, I'll show you that. So here is the bottom, and here's the string coming out here and it's coming out and going back to the saddle. So I'll spin it around the top of the nut of the spindle and come back. Alright, now you might not be able to see this but over on this side it's actually spun around on top of this loose end. There's the loose end there. Alright, so it's over the top of that loose end and I've come round the back and now I'm going under. So I lift this loose end up and I have that pointing towards the ceiling. Alright, don't know if you can see that there. So now what happens when we tighten the string, I'll give that a few turns. We don't have as much slack as we had before, so it's only going to take a few turns. And see what, what's happening, it's kind of capturing that loose end in a bit of a vice-like uh, device. So there it goes, getting a bit tighter now, coming up, it's 
to where I can actually let it go. I'm, I'm holding this with my other fingers behind there. So I can now let that go. And there you go, we're getting a bit of a sound. Oh, lots of fret buttons because I haven't actually set the saddles yet. Um, so there we go. And that's getting up to tension. I'll just leave that there for now. And I don't know if you can see there. You see this is the loose end here. And it's actually caught between uh, threads on the top and on the bottom. So there's no chance of that slipping out. So what I'll do now is I'll grab my pliers and I'll cut that there about two millimeters from the spindle. And there we go. That's the E string on. With the A and the D, we do exactly the same thing. One turn over the top, come underneath and then tighten. On the D, one turn over the top, come underneath and then tighten. Now with the G, B and E strings, the thinner strings, you can actually spin it around two or even three times, and maybe even down here about four times on the E string before you come underneath. That's um, just because it's a thin string, so you'll end up with a lot of slack. All right, so let's um, go ahead and now we'll, we'll see how that looks. Okay, I've got five strings on now. I'm just coming up to the very last E string. I just wanted to show you that thing about the extra loops. I'm going to come in underneath the spindle, uh, thread it through, and keep quite a bit of slack. And watch this. I'm going to come over the top and around. That's once. Oops, once, twice, three times, and four times. So I've gone four times over the top of this loose end here. Now, I grab the loose end, point it up towards the ceiling so it's out of the way, and then start tightening. <coughs> and because I've got those loops in there, it won't take long. And there you go, it's coming up to tension now. Uh, that sounds a bit funny because I haven't done the saddle, so it's buzzing against the fretboard. Alright, so we've got the strings on. I'll just cut that last E string off there. So there you go, there's the um, six strings all mounted to the uh, machine heads. And that's all done. I just need to put the string guides on, so uh, stick around and I'll show you how to do that on a TL1. Alright, cheers. Okay, so we've got our six guitar strings on the guitar now. The last thing we need to do before we start setting it up is to put those string guides in place. Now that's just another drilling and screwing job, so we'll um, come in again and we'll have a look at that. Okay, so we've got a nice view of the headstock here. Now these string spaces basically sit over the B and the E, like that. And when you screw them in, they bring the guitar strings down closer to the headstock. And the reason why we do that is because see how they're quite high off the headstock and when you're playing and the strings are at tension they can actually pop out of the nut like that. I don't know if you can see that. But you don't want that to happen when you're playing. So we need to bring these strings down closer to the headstock. That's what those spaces or guides are for. So these string spaces here consist of three components each. There's a screw, a post and the guide. Now, you'll notice the posts come in two sizes. There's a very short one there and a longer one there. The short one we'll use for the E and the B because they need to be closer down to the headstock. And the longer one here we'll use for the G and the D. So we need to work out where these go. Um, and obviously you need the strings at loose enough tension to be able to push them down easily. So those four there. Make sure they are through the nut. Oh, that one's popped out. So there you go, like that. And we'll work out a position for those. So I'll just put that E and B one on there. And we want it where the guitar starts to, where the headstock starts to flatten out. So I'm probably looking at just about on top of the P there for Pitbull. That looks like a good position. I might just see if I can mark that with a pencil. Okay, I've got a nice mark there for the, for the P, and I'll grab this other one. The longer one we'll use for the 
D and the G string. And they can be together because they're at different heights so they won't conflict, but I might just bring this one back a couple of millimetres. So I'll put the pencil in and push down. And there you go, I've marked a nice X there. So I can start drilling now. I just need to match my drill with these screws. All right, I've matched the drill bit and I can just drill, I'll make a note of how long these are. I don't want to drill in very far because these screws will probably self-tap. So I might just go in just to there, so that's about um, five mil. So over the X there. That's fine, and I'll do the other one. There you go, that's enough. All right, so I've got the screw through the guide and I'll just put the post on as well. This is the short one because we're doing the E and the B string. So there you go, that's all assembled. And very carefully I'll try and lay that down over the E and the B string and holding onto the post and putting the screw into the hole. Bit of a job but there you go, that looks pretty good. Alright, so I've got the string spacer there with the screw in it and I've got the post underneath. And this is the small post, remember, the short one. So I've got to try and push that down and screw it in at the same time. A little bit tricky, but... Okay, so I'm holding that in with the screwdriver. I've got it in place. Now we just need to screw that down. As I'm doing this, I'm probably thinking it would probably be easier if I actually did this without the strings on. But uh, this way I'm actually assured that I've got this in the right position. So that's going in well. I need to screw that all the way down until it hits the post. There you go. There you go, that's our first string spacer in place. And as you can see, because of the washer, it's still got a bit of movement around, that's fine. Let's see if I can tighten that a little bit. There you go, so that looks good, so we can bring those strings up to tension. Alright, let's do the other one and see how it looks. And there you go, that's the two string guides in place. See one's higher than the other. It's worked out nicely. So that's the strings, the strings guides in place. Now we need to uh, go and set up the guitar and hear how it sounds.